going to do an exercise for American Mahjong using the National Mahjong League card. This exercise is called Charleston Modeling. We're going to practice identifying the strength in a dealt hand, then we'll practice decision making through the Charleston. And the Charleston is a little more than half the game. If you can learn how to harness the power of the Charleston, you can exponentially improve your dealt hand and gain an advantage at the table. We're going to do three iterations. We'll start as the dealer, then we'll be non-dealer and dealer again. So we'll get 14 tiles, then we'll get 13 and then 14. And I'll create a mock Charleston with no jokers for each one. We have a flower, pair of wests, and a south. We have a 1-8 in bams with a pair of ones. In dots, we have 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, pair 4, pair 5. If these were your tiles, what would you focus on, and what would be your first pass? If these were my tiles, I would focus on the multiples. West, one, four, and five. We are not gonna be able to use all of them. So I would build around the most of them with my remaining tiles so that I'm using most of my tiles. So that means four or five. We could do something consecutive. So I would keep the two and the six and the seven. This is a long range, so we're probably not gonna be able to keep the seven or the two. We'll have to wait and see. There is a hand that uses wins with a run. In order to pass defensively, I would maybe keep these wests and pass these, break up the one bam, so we can use the four or five. Let's pass these three. We have three, eight. Our predominant suit is dots. We're going for four, five. We might be able to do something consecutive. So maybe three, four, five, six, and the two can go. So let's pass two, eight south. We'll focus on three, four, five, six probably. We have a two. Here we have two, three, four, five. We also picked up a three though. So we could do three, four, five with the flower or three, four, five, six, pung, pung, kong, kong. We have one tile to pass with the dragon, one there with the one bam. I would break these up at this point and pass these three. We have a white dragon that corresponds with dots. Here we have like numbers with sevens and a west. So I would whittle into here because I would not pass like numbers. And this we probably won't be able to use unless of course we play four, five, six, seven. But we do have options even with this dragon. I think what I would do is maybe let these go and focus on one suit with or without the dragon and pass these three. Flower and a five dot. Now we have a pung in here. We have three tiles to pass, so we really don't have to 
pick a hand or even figure out what we're going to play, what to discard. We don't even need to worry about that because we have three discards. So let's go ahead and pass these three. We'll just keep gathering. No keepers. So we don't have to do any analysis. We just keep going. No keepers. Now here we have north and east. That's going to be a risky pass. I wouldn't pass two wins if I don't have to. So I would let something in here go. Probably the seven dot. Maybe with a north. Because we can do three, four, five dragon with the flowers. We could do four, five, six with the flowers. Let's go ahead and pass these three. No keepers. Look at the wins though. News. We almost have news there. But I'd say this is a really good result. If I had to pick a hand, I would probably play three, four, five dragon, but I wouldn't pick a hand yet. I would gather. I would keep tiles in this range, three, four, five, six, see what develops, try to use the flowers. We have four discards before we have to pick a hand. If you would have done something differently with these tiles, write pull one and what you would have done in the video description below. We have a flower, a north, four, seven, and bams, two, four, six, seven, eight, in dots with a pair of eights, two, five, eight, in cracks. If these were your tiles, what would you focus on and what would be your first pass? If these were my tiles, I would build around the eight. So I would hold the eights and then I would look at the rest of my tiles and hold as many of them as possible and play a category that uses most of my tiles. We have a lot of two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. But we also have some consecutive. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, with or without the flower. So eight tiles to two, four, six, eight. If we played instead five, six, seven, eight, we would have seven tiles. So what's interesting about playing consecutive run is that it's much more flexible than two, four, six, eight. So I would consider that. We have one tile we can pass. Five is a little bit outside the range of six, seven, eight. We could do five, six, seven, eight, but we really have the wrong combination here. So I would let the five crack go. Then I would choose one of the sevens to go because we could maybe do something consecutive with six, seven, eight, and we're keeping the six and the eight for evens. So let's let the seven go. Let's see how this develops. We got a four. No new multiple. We did pick up a nine. So we have six, seven, eight, nine, but that nine bam and even the five bam doesn't really help with the suits that we currently have, especially with the eight dot. I think at this point I would let the seven go. Now this is a little risky, seven, five, nine, because they're all odds. I think we can make that a little better by letting go of an even number. So maybe pass four, nine, and the seven. 
we got a pair of fives. That changes things. Four, five, six, eight. Five, six, eight. We have a four, two now. Two, four, two, five, six, eight, five. We have a lot of four, five, six. Two, four, six, eight. That would use two multiples. I rarely pass flowers. So by process of elimination, I think what I would do is keep the two, four, and the five. Maybe we could switch to consecutive. That gives us two tiles to pass. We're going across, so we have to whittle down more. We have two, four, six, eight, or four, five, six, two, four, six, eight. I wouldn't break up a five because we already have a five. So what I would do here is probably let the two go. Let's see what happens. We have a seven, nine, and a one. Ooh, look at that, one suit. Okay, what I would probably do here is instead of passing all evens, I think I would break up the four and pass one nine with it. We got a four. Here's a two eight. So again, I would hold evens if possible. We have four, five, six, which is much more flexible than two, four, six, eight. I think I would let these go, maybe pass two, four, seven. We got a two and a six. We have two tiles to pass, we're on last right. Two, four, six, eight. I would now break up the fives and focus on evens. Two, four, six, eight. If we kept the five and played two, four, or four, five, six, we would have to throw away two pair. But this way, we can play a couple of different things with these even tiles. There may even be, hmm, I was thinking of the pair hand, but this year's pair hand uses singles with four, six. So I don't think I would keep this eight. I think I would focus on one suit. We got a white dragon. There's a two, four, six, eight hand with the corresponding dragon. And I think I would risk passing this. It's a little risky with two different odd numbers in one suit and a little odd number here. It's a little risky, but this looks pretty good. No keepers. So we have three discards, three discards and a couple of hands we could play. We could play the first even hand, three flowers, pear, pear, pung, kong, or we could even play the dragon hand. Now just the fifth hand down, pear, pung, pear, pung, kong. We would of course have to let this go, but I think that was a great Charleston. If you would have done something differently with these tiles, write it in the comment section below with pull two. We have a joker, three flowers, northeast, white dragon, seven, eight in cracks with a pair of sevens, eight, nine in bams, three, eight in dots. If these were your tiles, what would you focus on and what would be your first pass? If these were my tiles, I'd build around the sevens and the flowers. So 
with the remaining tiles, we have some consecutive potential. So I would keep the eights and that nine. I would pass the three and a wind, and I typically don't pass white dragons. So something would have to go here, probably the nine. So I think I would pass these three first. We've got a five, which is not too helpful unless we switch to five, seven, nine. We just let the nine bam go, but we could get it back. We also have a multiple, a white dragon. So I would reassess. If we can get a seven bam, we could play like numbers with sevens and use that. So I think I would discard these. So let's break up the eights, pass a wind and a five. So let's pass those three. Two, six, four. We have a seven here and a pair of white dragons. I would think about keeping this two for a year potential. We have tiles we can pass. So let's pass one of each suit. Three, four. Now here's something to consider. Three, four dragon. Oh, look, we got that nine back. Or this is a different nine, actually. But we have a pair of sevens in here. Year potential, three, four dragon potential. I would pass these three. Sixes, five, six, seven. Look at this, five, six, seven. I would let these go, even the dragons. Five, six, seven. I think I would do that. Passing two, three, four, that's pretty risky. I think here, oh, even that's risky. This is the least of all evens, evils. Do the best you can with what you have. Building your hand is the priority. Two, three. Even though it's the same suit, five, six, seven, really two, three doesn't work with six, seven. So I would let those go. We'll pass these. We got a four, four, five, six, seven. With flowers, the four is not gonna be helpful, but this two is not so helpful either. So for the cross pass, I think what I would do here is pass two. We could pass a white dragon, it would be a little risky, but if we want to optimize our potential to build our hand, we can risk it. We have a hand with no gaps. Oh, look, we got a three. But we have flowers, three of them, three, four, five, six, seven. If we're going to build around the multiples, really these can go. Five, six, seven building around the multiples with the flowers. So we have five discards and a hand with no gaps if we decide to do it. We could even use this for the red dragon if we want to use all the flowers, but we could do pear flower and then Kongs. I would just gather and discard those. If you would have done something differently with these tiles, write pull three and what you would do in the comment section below. American Mahjong is a game of multiples. 86% of the hands on the card use Pungs, Kongs, and then Quints if you get Jokers. If you build around multiples, you're going to optimize your potential to win. If you don't have multiples, build around the predominant pattern until one forms, then reassess and build around the multiples. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the little gray bell if you do, that way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next video, may all your picks be keepers.